I remember being at the grocery store when I was young, shopping for that week's groceries with my mom and my siblings. I remember very clearly what I felt, the need to buy something. I had nothing in mind, but the $1 roll of gum at the register fit the bill, so I gave in. I still think back to that day and it gives me a bit of a knot in my stomach. Not because I lost out on some great investment opportunity with that dollar, but just because of why I did it. I just wanted to spend my money and I've experienced that feeling my whole life. Now I've done 12 or 13 videos on this channel so far. As one who frequents YouTube, I'm very aware of the skepticism with which people watch many videos. In 2021, anyone can pick up a camera and talk, but it takes time to build trust. And it's hard to trust someone if you don't know where they're coming from. Background matters, context matters. I told you that story to give you a little background to my perspective on money. So I decided my next video would be a proper introduction. Hello, I'm Caleb and I'm happy to meet you. I hope this helps to build trust as I continue to work hard on videos for you. As I've mentioned, I'm a spender at heart. I remember many years growing up where I only had $20 left in December for Christmas gifts. Fortunately, my parents had a very healthy view of money and taught me and my siblings money principles that we would take into our adult lives. They taught us things like giving. I remember after mowing the lawn, my dad would give me a dollar ten and then we'd go through the mental exercise of trying to figure out which direction the decimal point would go in order for me to give 10% of my meager earnings to church. To this day I believe that that instilled in me a habit of giving and an understanding of where my money comes from as well as the fact that I'm just a steward of my money. They taught us about debt. I learned this lesson as I was getting into filmmaking as a hobby. I'd started making videos of family photo sessions to get some extra practice and I wanted to get better equipment so I could up the quality of my videos. I determined that I needed a monopod to help me stabilize my camera. The one that I wanted was $300 and I did not have that kind of money. I was a spender. Then this monopod went on sale and I was trying to figure out how I could get my hands on it for this cheaper price. Ultimately, I asked my dad if he would buy it for me and then I could slowly pay him back for it. Very vividly, I remember him saying this, Caleb, if you don't have the money for it, you can't buy it. And that stuck with me. Our family didn't borrow money for anything but our home and a plot of land. So the fact that my parents stuck with that principle for their kids made an impact. At 12, I started babysitting for a local Bible study and got to earn a little extra spending money. I remember thinking, this is the most money I've ever made before. This $12 is quite the paycheck. High school saw a lot of odd jobs. My brother Josiah and I did a lot of these odd jobs together. We mowed the lawn, we built a patio, we sold firewood, we worked for a landscaper at our church. I started college in 2012 and had a strong focus on my studies in agricultural engineering. I went to a community college to knock out my first two years, and then I finished off my bachelor's degree in the next three years at, wait for it, The Ohio State University. Oh, to the scarlet and gray. Hey, we gotta take out our trash somehow. Wait a second. Yep, that's five years for a four-year program. He ain't the sharpest knife in the place where they keep the knives. Money-wise, I was very fortunate to not need any student loans in college. I got a full-ride scholarship at the community college for the first two years, and then for two of the remaining three years, half of my tuition was covered by that same scholarship. The remaining amount of money was covered by my 10 years of selling animals in 4-H, as well as a gracious gift from my parents. I didn't work much in college except for some internships during the summer. When I was in my junior year at the end of 2014, Bailey and I started dating. We dated for exactly two years before I asked her to be my wife on December 19th of 2016. Aww. This is when I started taking money far more seriously. I realized I had a solid six months before I would be responsible for not only myself as a graduate, but also for Bailey who was still in college. I felt so ill-equipped going into 2017. If I didn't figure that stuff out then, I didn't know when I would. So I went full bore into researching things like finances, budgets, retirement, insurance, and anything else that would make me feel like a legitimate adult. That's when I made my first mock budget and things financially changed for me. I would never done anything like this before, but it felt so good to be as ready for the real world as possible. The budget gave me confidence that Bailey and I would be okay with our money despite our lack of experience with real world expenses. We were engaged for six months and got married in June of 2017 just one month after I graduated. The first several months were a challenge budget-wise. I had made a mock budget, but it changed a lot as we got into the groove of tracking our expenses. It was in this time that Bailey and I became entirely debt-free as we paid off the only student loan that she had taken out, one just over $5,000. That gave us a lot of confidence moving forward with our finances. For the next three years, we kept a pretty tight budget as we finished saving our three-month emergency fund and continued saving for both Bailey's tuition and our future home. We rented an apartment for three years after we got married. I wasn't a big fan of it because I like having more space between me and my neighbors than just a wall. 
but I'm glad we did it. It made it a lot easier on us financially from the start, and we were able to hold off and kind of see where our jobs led us. In that time, I wrote a book. Ooh. It's called Graduated and Clueless. I self-published it on Amazon in 2018. Honestly, I was surprised by the lack of books written to educate young people on essential topics. So I decided to write it myself. It's 138 pages and it covers anything from jobs to insurance to finances, retirement, dating, marriage. There you go, now you know what the book is. If you'd like to give it a read, you can get a free copy of it on any of the major ebook sellers, or if you'd like to support me, you can pick up a paperback on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description down below. At the end of 2019, I had the distinct pleasure of co-leading a Financial Peace University class at our church. There were three families that showed up. Two of them were related to me. But that helped distill in me a love for teaching financial education, and I don't regret it. Honestly, I think it was that class that led me to begin financial coach training in January of 2020, and I finished that a few months later. In 2020, the world stopped because of Rona, but it felt like our lives just got busier and busier. I began the position of treasurer in our church. Bailey graduated debt-free because of scholarships, grants, and much of our own savings. Finally, no more school for either of us. And we purchased a home in May. We'd been looking for a while and finally found one that we loved. For those curious, we did put down 20% on a 15-year loan where our payment was less than 25% of our take-home pay. Maybe we'll give you a tour sometime. And that brings us to today. Just a guy living with his wife and his doggy in an old house that we're fixing up and trying to find small ways that we can make our lives just a little bit better financially and not financially. Now I'm not like a lot of other financial people on YouTube. I'm not a millionaire and I won't be for some time. I just have a passion for helping people like you understand that money doesn't have to be confusing. I'm just here to give you as simple of explanations as possible while making the process of financial education just a little bit more entertaining. Like I said at the beginning of the video, context matters. Without the context of a story, I'm just another random guy on YouTube trying to get subscribers and likes and chocolate milk. My hope is that this helps you trust me just a little bit more. Or at a minimum, just gives you some background into why I think the way that I do about money. If you follow this channel, I will be honored to have you and I won't take you for granted. And now having shared my story, I wanna hear yours in the comments below. What are you trying to change about your finances right now? Okay, this script took a lot longer to write than normal because it's a lot more personal. I would greatly appreciate a like on it because then YouTube can see that this is a good video to suggest to others. Also hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because then you can stay up to date on all the videos that I have coming out to help you take forward strides in your finances. Remember, money doesn't have to be confusing. You can control it. Thanks for hanging out with me and listening to a little bit of my story. Me and my tiny desk are out.